twelfths of cake. Jessica had one twelfth of cake. Nancy had eleven twelfths of cake. About how much cake do they have all together? So it doesn't say what's the sum of how much cake they have because then you would just do eleven twelfths plus one twelfth plus five twelfths and it would just be an easy addition of fractions. It says about how much. So that's why instead of an equal sign, I put a swiggly equal sign. That shows an estimation. So let's look at our number line that we made. Let's find 5 twelfths. And then we need to find 1 twelfth and then 11 twelfths and make a determination. So 5 twelfths is right over here. 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. 5 twelfths is just a little bit below that. So I could say 5 twelfths is about 1 half. Okay. The next one is 1 twelfth. 1 twelfth is right here. It's barely anything. It's basically zero. Okay. For this question, it's safe to say that it's pretty much zero. It's close to the benchmark of zero. And then the last one was 11 twelfths. Well, in my last clip, I just showed you 11 twelfths is close to 12 twelfths, which is one whole. So on this board here, I'm going to say 5 twelfths is about a half. 1 twelfth is about zero. 11 twelfths is about one. So when you put it all together, half plus zero plus one is one whole and one half of cake. Let's go ahead and keep adding to our number line. Here is one tenth. One tenth is less than one eighth based on size, but it's more than one twelfth. So one tenth is actually going to fall in somewhere over here. So you know what? I'm noticing a pattern. This is one fourth, one eighth, one tenth, one twelfth, which means one ninth is probably over there. One eleventh is over there. This could be one seventh, one sixth, one fifth, one fourth. This could be around a third and then half. So the bigger the denominator, if there's like a one and your denominator is, I'm going to even just make up something like 20, 1 20th, that's a very, very tiny piece. I mean, just look, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 tenth, 1 twelfth. It's getting smaller. So if I had 1 20th, I'm even smaller. If I had 1 40th, I'm smaller. I'm 1 100th. I'm even closer to zero on the, on the number line. So if I had 19 20ths, whoops. If I had 19 20ths, I'm like right here. I am so close to one whole. Because 20 20ths is one whole. 19 20ths is very close to one whole. I could even say 18 20ths is close to one whole. But then if I had something like 10 twentieths, I am halfway. Let's add one fifth. That would go right there. I'm going to have to make some room for all of this. One sixth would be right here. Maybe if I turn these sideways, this will help. It's actually getting very crowded. So 1 12th, 1 10th, 1 8th, 1 6th, 1 5th, 1 4th. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces, as long as there's a 1 as my numerator. Let's go ahead and keep adding to our number line. Here is 1 10th. 1 10th is less than 1 8th based on size, but it's more than 1 12th. So one tenth is actually going to fall in somewhere over here. So you know what? I'm noticing a pattern. This is one fourth, one eighth, one tenth, one twelfth, which means one ninth is probably over there. One eleventh is over there. This could be one seventh, one sixth, one fifth, one fourth. This could be around a third. 
and then half. So the bigger the denominator, if there's like a one and your denominator is, I'm going to even just make up something like 20, 1 20th, that's a very, very tiny piece. I mean, just look, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 tenth, 1 twelfth. It's getting smaller. So if I had 1 20th, I'm even smaller. If I had 1 40th, I'm smaller. I'm 1 100th. I'm even closer to zero on the, on the number line. So if I had 19 20th, whoops. If I had 19 20th, I'm like right here. I am so close to one whole. Because 20 20th is one whole. 19 20th is very close to one whole. I could even say 18 20th is close to one whole. But then if I had something like 10 twentieths, I am halfway. Let's add one fifth. That would go right there. I'm going to have to make some room for all of this. One sixth would be right here. Maybe if I turn these sideways, this will help. It's actually getting very crowded. So one twelfth, one tenth, one eighth, one sixth, one fifth, one fourth. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces, as long as there's a one as my numerator. So let's say, let's start with a completely blank number line again, and let's see if we can put, put the fractions where they belong. So I went ahead and drew it, and I put zero on the left because that's a given. Now let's say I have seven eighths of pizza, seven eighths finished of pizza at a party. So when you look at seven eighths, I'm gonna get another marker board real quick. When you look at seven eighths, you know that eight eighths would be one whole. So I know seven eighths is close to eight eighths. So I could make this 8 eighths as a visual, and then I can just kind of put 7 eighths over there. I also know halfway would be 4 eighths. So where I put 7 eighths is a pretty good, pretty good idea. Maybe a little bit more to the right, because I would have 5 eighths here and 6 eighths here. Let's say I had one-fifth. One-fifth would be more over here because that would be two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. I hope this is making sense. Um, let's look at another example. How about nine-tenths? Well, nine-tenths this would be zero tenths, one tenths, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. I know that has to be five tenths because that's halfway. Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. Nine tenths would be right around here. So then that could be ten tenths. So you have to use your knowledge of the halfway point, what could be close to zero and what could be close to one to help you. Um, let's think about three-sixths. Where would three-sixths go? Well, half of six is three, so three-sixths is actually equivalent to half. So if they told me two-sixths, I would be somewhere here. If they gave me four-sixths, then I know I would be somewhere here. This would be five-sixths, this would be six-sixths, this would be one-sixths, this would be zero-sixths. Now let's look at another example. Okay, Cindy bought a liquid soap and used 1 12th in the morning, 4 tenths in the afternoon, and 8 fourteenths in the evening. About how much has she used? So to start off, draw a number line, and we know this is zero, and we know this is one whole. So 1 twelfth. So if I'm thinking about twelfths, I know this is 12 twelfths. Whoops. Didn't get it all on the marker board. So this would be 
0 12 so I know 1 12 would be right around here so that is close to basically 0 it's it's like she barely used anything okay now we also have four tenths in the afternoon when you look at tenths if you were to imagine this in tenths, this would be zero tenths. This would be ten tenths. So then halfway would be five tenths. Well, they said she used four tenths, so that would be right around here. So you could say she used about half in the afternoon. Not exactly, but close to it, because five tenths is half. And eight fourteenths in the evening. Well, if you thought of this as fourteenths, that's zero fourteenths. That's fourteen fourteenths. Halfway would be 7 fourteenths. So if she used 8 fourteenths, then she's right around here, which means this is also about half. So we have half, half, and then basically almost nothing. So 0 plus half plus half equals one whole. So you could say she has almost used the entire bottle. Okay, let's look at another example. Jessica has bottles of paint to use for an art lesson. The class used 11 twelfths for the first day. The second day they used three twelfths. The third day they used seven twelfths. How much paint was used? About how much paint was used? So Here's my number line, and notice these are all in twelfths, so I can say this is zero twelfths. This is twelve twelfths. Halfway would be six twelfths. So the first one is eleven twelfths. So eleven twelfths would fall right around here. So that's basically saying we they almost used one whole bottle of paint one whole bottle the next day they use three twelfths well if this is zero twelfths and this is six twelfths one one two three four five so here's where three twelfths would be now notice three twelfths I can't say it's basically nothing but I can't say it's halfway either it's actually one fourth. So that would be um, one fourth that they used. And then the third day they used seven twelfths. So seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths, ten twelfths, eleven twelfths, twelve twelfths. So if seven twelfths is here, it's close to one half. So one whole plus one fourth plus one half. That actually, you could use another marker board to show that it would be like this. You could say that's zero, that's one whole, that's two whole, that's half, that's one and one half. Here's the fourth. So we said they used up about one the first day, about a fourth the second day. Actually, you could even do it backwards. The third day they used half and then one fourth the third the second day. So that's one whole and three fourths. I made this a double number line, which means this one's zero to one and then one to two. So that would be one and one half. That would be one and one fourth. That would be one and three fourths. So the answer would be they used about one and three-fourths.